Hello, this is Humberto Martinez. I will be discussing the imaging of the pulmonary patient during several short videos. Uh, we will begin by discussing the objectives of these lecture series as well as the normal anatomy of the patient as seen on the PA and lateral views of the chest. We plan to review the basic, normal, anatomy as seen on the PA and the lateral radiograph of the chest, review the acceptable technique for an adequate chest radiograph. Along the way, we'll introduce some abnormal findings on plain film and, whenever possible, introduce some CT correlation. PA radiograph of the chest, upright, and we know that because we have gas in the fundus of the stomach within a centimeter from the left diaphragm. Just to visit some of the important anatomical landmarks, the right lateral costophrenic recess, the right cardiophrenic recess, the border of the right atrium, the right hilum which is mostly vascular structures as seen on the PA radiograph. Lymph nodes are not usually visualized unless they're calcified or enlarged. Most of these are pulmonary arteries and some of the upper lobe veins are superimposed upon the hilum on the PA radiograph. The lower lobe veins enter more horizontally and more directly into the left atrium. The lateral superior margin of the superior vena cava, the right clavicular head, air filled trachea, and the spinous processes, which we use to evaluate whether the radiograph and the patient were correctly aligned and positioned to avoid rotation, the aortic arch manifesting itself as an aortic knob appearing structure. The space known as the aortic pulmonic window between the aortic arch and the uh, top of the left pulmonary artery, notice the left hilum is more superior in location than the right hilum because the left pulmonary artery rides over the left bronchus. The left atrial border, the left ventricular border. The descending aorta, a very important landmark on the PA radiograph, lets us evaluate for any disease process involving the left lung base. The gastric bubble and the lateral, which is slightly more challenging. We will revisit again the anatomical structures on the lateral radiograph. The space here in black is the aorticopulmonic window the most anterior soft tissue density that's continuous with the right ventricle is actually the outflow tract of the right ventricle. The rounded soft tissue density structure that we see here uh, transversing in the plane from right to left but seen on end is the right pulmonary artery. The most superior and posterior landmark of the heart is the left atrium. The most anterior soft tissue structure practically touching the anterior chest wall but not higher than a third of the anterior chest wall measured from the right diaphragm to the sternal angle is the right ventricle. The left ventricle is the continuation of the heart posteriorly and you can evaluate how large that left ventricle is by identifying the posterior wall of the inferior vena cava. Obviously, the aortic arch and then the sort of parallel structure, slightly smaller than the aorta, going over this air-filled structure. This is the left pulmonary artery, and that is the left bronchus, literally seen on FOSS coming towards us. These conglomeration of vessels are confluence of the pulmonary veins which eventually will enter the left atrium. 
The least magnified of the two rib cages on the lateral, obviously, is the left ribs because this is a left lateral radiograph. The right ribs, and if you follow each of these ribs down, you'll see that they connect with a particular costophrenic recess and diaphragm. This is the right diaphragm, not only because it's more superior, but more reliably because you can follow it anteriorly more than the left diaphragm, which when it touches the heart, we lose the silhouette. But you can follow those diaphragms down and correctly identify the left costophrenic recess and the right costophrenic recess. Just to show you that sometimes you can see the uh, fissures for the major lobes. Um, you may not see them in every patient, but if we look here, we can faintly see the horizontal fissure on the PA and on the lateral. We see two oblique fissures. If you think that the heart sits on the left side, and pushes back a little bit. This is the left oblique fissure and this is the right oblique fissure. Don't expect to see the oblique fissures, fissures throughout their entirety. So this is just to remind us that we have... Oh, before we do that, and here we have uh, not plain film but coral <clears throat> and sagittal reconstructions as seen on CT, you can beautifully see the minor fissure. Now you know why some people prefer to call it minor rather than horizontal. It isn't always perfectly horizontal. Therefore, we're looking at the right lung right here. The oblique fissures will move superiorly or inferiorly on the coronal sections, depending on whether you are more anterior or posterior. Here's part of the horizontal fissure. So reminding uh, everybody that there are three lobes in the right lung, two lobes in the left lung, 10 segments in the right lung, and eight segments on the left. So what happened with the left lung? We'll find out in a minute. This is just a pictorial representation of the general area of the lobes, you'll, uh, of the segments. You'll find out that there is a lot of overlap in the segments in one view, the PA view, and that it's very important to have both views to be able to localize the segments to the best of our ability. So we're dealing with the most uh, apical region of the right upper lobe, that's the apical segment. Here, posteriorly, we have the posterior segment, and here is the anterior segment, uh, delimited by the, uh, inferiorly by the horizontal fissure. So if we go back, you can see how much overlap there is between those three segments. You need both views, again, to perfectly localize them. Inferior to that, we have the lateral segment and the medial segment of the right middle lobe. Notice that the medial segment has to be involved with pneumonia or collapse for the right heart border to be obscured. And that is the one that classically gives you that wedge shape opacity overlying the heart on the lateral view. If only the lateral segment is involved with consolidation or atelectasis, you will still see the right heart border. So um, that leaves us uh, five segments for the right lower lobe. Here's the superior segment. Look how high it rides. So you could have a lesion in this superior segment, almost at the level of the aortic arch. And unless you have the lateral, you will not know if that's in the right upper lobe territory or in the superior segment of the right lower lobe. So again, emphasizing the importance of having both views. So the superior segment of the right lower lobe, and then we have to cover all bases. So think about it. You have to cover the anterior base, the medial base, the lateral base, and the posterior base. Here's the medial basal segment. Here is the anterior basal segment, here is the lateral basal segment, and here is the posterior basal segment. Again, there's overlap in a lot of these segments, and if you have both views, you will not be able to tell which segment you're dealing with. Now realize that the diaphragm will be obscured on the right depending on which segment 
is involved with a pneumonia or atelectasis. So it may not be obvious unless the entire right lower lobe is consolidated or collapsed that you may have a part or all of the right diaphragm obscured. So the if we go now to the left side, this looks like a rather large apical segment and that's because the apical and the posterior segment have combined to give you the apical posterior segment of the left upper lobe. There is where we lose one of the segments when they combine. Uh, remember there's no horizontal fissure or minor fissure in the left lung, okay? So we're going to have the anterior segment here and then two more segments of the left upper lobe, the superior lingula, lingula in the shape of a Latin uh, tongue, lingula, and then the inferior segment of the lingula, both of which are going to obscure part of the left heart border and will project on the lateral radiograph over the heart oftentimes could be confused with the middle lobe process unless you have a good PA radiograph. Then that leaves four segments for the left lower lobe. The superior segment of the left lower lobe is almost a mirror image of the right side. And then we're going to have a rather large segment, which is anterior and medial. That's the anterior medial basal segment, another combination. There goes the other segment. And then we're going to have the two remaining basal segments, the lateral basal and the posterior basal segment. Again, the point here is to emphasize the importance of having both PA and lateral views to localize abnormalities.